<clears throat> I get to go first here, because I'm the least funny here. <laughs> In fact, I'm totally boring. Um, you know, thank you very much, Ed. This is an amazing night you put together, all the decision makers in Canada. Um, I'm privileged to be part of this, and thank you uh, for the Public Policy Forum group. Everybody has worked very hard. Uh, it's amazing, 1,300 people. Um, I, I found uh, Neil Turok's speech tonight um, very uh, inspiring, um, particularly when he said that Stephen Hawking was the most effective, or probably the most effective, communicator in the world of science. But I found myself thinking that Neil is the most passionate communicator of science in the world. And we in Canada are very lucky to have some passion in our country because Canadians are not no normally known for passion. We're known for seriousness. Uh, we're known for our sincerity, of which there is a tremendous abundance, as I'm seeing tonight, for example. And that's exactly why our show has lasted for actually 26 years, because it's very easy to make fun of very serious, sincere people, which is all of Canada. <laughs> And there's a standard joke in the world of comedy, which is that life is easy. Uh, comedy, that's hard. That's a very commonly stated joke amongst comedians. It's one of those things everyone says. And 26 years ago, when we started this show, writing comedy in Canada was a little bit hard. Not very hard, but a little bit. Today, it's much, much easier. <laughs> Ridiculously easy. That's why the show has lasted as long. By the way, members of the CBC are in this room tonight, and I really shouldn't be saying this. This is the easiest job in the world. <laughs> Our job of being satirist has become easiest. The jokes write themselves. Um, and that's exactly why our show has lasted. Ridiculousness around the world has grown exponentially. For example, 52% of the population of Britain, 67% in Hungary, 80% in Russia, but my favorite example is Italy, appropriate because that's where the Divine Comedy was written. The most popular party there, the one that's going to form the government, was created by a comedian. Imagine a comedian running a whole country. What do you think of that? <laughs> In that case, actually, we would have no job left. When the fool becomes the king, who will perform the pantomimes, put on the naughty shows, utter the foul fart jokes? The king? However, in this room we needn't worry because Mary and I are not planning political careers. Or rather, I'm not. <laughs> um, that's not to say that uh, politicians are not professional actors. Um, many are. But very few are good comedians. But I've decided that that's exactly the whole problem. That if everyone in Parliament just simply told jokes all day long, maybe everyone would be happier. And I believe that's exactly why the White House is working so well these days. <laughs> and why they haven't done anything serious, like, say, invade North Korea. But I, what's the hesitation? Can't they see the funny in it? Now, North Korea, that's a society that would benefit definitely from more comedy. <laughs> which prompts me to make at least one, because this is a very serious room and a very serious gathering, I'm going to make one serious, very serious comment tonight. Um, and that's what's, so there's something that's puzzled me, you know, and I've been very confused lately by this, when that's the, strange correlation uh, between bad leadership and bad haircuts. <laughs> but, by the way, I noticed in that picture that I had hair a number of years ago, that was, uh, and probably when I had hair, I was more sensible. Um, but John F. Kennedy, now he had sensible hair, and, uh, but we have the Donald, and 
And that's a haircut um, that has a personality of its own, I think. I I've even heard that the hair is giving him military advice. <laughs> What's curious is nobody talks about the hair anymore. I have only one thing to say about that, sad. Um, <laughs> The reason is because it's been trumped by much funnier things, yeah. <laughs> like removing troublesome bishops, heads of the FBI, special prosecutors, the usual. Um, fortunately, in Canada, we have a prime minister who has very sensible hair. <laughs> That's a relief. Um, but I, I you know, want to thank the Public Policy Forum for, for this. Um, for this evening, um, and I want to thank the CBC uh, for staying behind uh, 22 minutes. 22 minutes would not have happened. We would have been canceled 24 years ago <laughs> if it was not for the CBC. CBC is a unique institution, so I want to bring that to attention tonight. Thank you. And I want to thank the hundreds of people who have worked on 22 Minutes and contributed, the creators. But I mostly want to thank uh, this great, great Canadian here, who I've had the privilege of working with for 26 years. Longer. So, longer, 30 yeah. years, because we <laughs> did Codco years. together, yeah. an old TV series. <laughs> uh, last but not least, I want to thank our audiences in Halifax. The show is a success because of those Halifax audiences. Uh, Maritimers, Atlantic Canadians have a unique sense of humor. Half the show is the audience. The audience writes the show. So, thank you. Mary. Thank you, Michael.